Welcome to episode 115 of Bolt Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. From the province of Niftingrad. Ooh, Niftingrad. A little throwback to Pete Nifton. Yeah, shout out to Pete. Purveyor of all fine art, second edition Blood Bowl. The creator of the Blood Bowl universe visuals. Yeah, have no particular reason for that, but... Well, it's good. Just send it out there. Who are you, Steve? I am Steve, a.k.a. Kilowoggy. You are Scott Prime. I am Scott Prime. How you doing, my man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I am doing good. Um, We've been enjoying the spoils of the GW sponsorship. It's not really a sponsorship, but... No, it's not a sponsor. It's just good to talk about it. It was yeah. finally fun to like get that off our chest and be able to talk about stuff uh, so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna i just want to throw this out there just because i want it on record as soon as possible i am pretty sure i know what the next team is i told now S- told scott and he thinks my theory holds water but he's not convinced no and we have nothing <laughs> People now are going to be like, you buttholes had a preview copy early, nope. and Steve has nothing to base this on. Steve is, no, I do. for whatever reason. Well, you do. You're like putting everything into like <laughs> an Excel spreadsheet, and you've come up with some like theory that Chaos Dwarves need, Badlands needs more star players. Right. So what I did is I looked at all the new, the way that they do star players now, it's Badlands Brawl. Elven Kingdoms League, Halfling Thimble Cup, blah, blah, blah. Those are the special rules. Well, up until this most recent issue of the Spike, which we're going into, Sylvanian Spotlight only had four stars. This is all coming out of the book. And obviously, this is the new stuff, guys. Yeah, so. You know, we saw the book in advance because of the leaks and stuff. So I was just playing around in Excel when I was bored at work and doing all this. Um, so that got expanded. So now if we look at the teams that have the least number of star players available to them, it is orc teams, black orcs and regular orcs. They only have five because they do the Badlands Brawl. That being the case, I would bet it's going to be the Chaos Dwarves because they, according to the Team of Legends, get access to Badlands Brawl stars. So that means that they'll add two or three. They might, you know, bump up the favorite of and like turn them into allowing them because they have a Minotaur. They could maybe pick different big guys based on different favorite ofs. I don't know, but I just want to put it out there right now based upon my sleuthing and data compilation that (laughs) (laughs) Chaos Dwarves would be next. Well, if I'm going to get to guess, I'm going to say Vampires. How about that? That's solid. Because everybody's freaking out about the vampires having animal savagery. And I think all the teams of legends that eventually, once they do get made, I think they're going to tweak them. So they're not going to look exactly the same as those. Yeah, of course. Um, So we'll see. And I don't think Luther um, Dragonborg is gone. I think he'll be around. I can see him coming back. But... Who knows? We'll see what happens. I want to talk about something else really, really, really quick. My championship and fumble? No, I don't want to talk about that at all. That's fine. Didn't we talk about that last episode? No. We kept it just to the the release. Oh, okay. Well, Steve won the championship in our Oklahoma Online Blood Bowl League. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. No big deal. Everybody hates Steve. That's fine. I understand. He he beat a slam team. They're not even a real team. So, like, it doesn't (laughs) even matter. (laughs) Fair the enough. super the super powerful dwarves got upset though that was pretty crazy. So do you see this, Steve? Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, this is a product from GW. It's a Space Marine Heroes box. It is kind of like a pack of Magic cards, and you don't know what little Space Marine you're gonna get. There's six different ones. Okay, and like the little display comes with six models. Now my store sells these for $12. So $12 for one random character. Yeah. Now the box says Space Marine Heroes. So I don't know if this guy is a hero to like the Space Marine Army or anything. Truth be told, I had no business buying one of these. But (laughs) 
<laughs> when the last Space Marines came out, I wanted to buy one of these mm-hmm. just because they're blind bag things, and I'm like my children. I, I don't know. They're kind of fun. Yeah, of course. This one's a Nurgle Space Marine, and I thought there was one out of the six on the back. I was like, that one looks like he's holding the flag and not a gun. I sure would like to get one of these. And if I did, this guy could be like a coach or a sideline figure. Um, I had somebody pick out a box for me. I purchased it, and it was the one I wanted. So Nice. We were talking. If they did this random blind back, blind packaging for, like, Blood Bowl, like if this was no. called Human Lineman... And they were like different poses with faces or something. We would have a problem, wouldn't we? As a Blood Bowl community. God, no, because it's it's not the same. A it's line, not the same? If it was a star player, maybe. Okay, okay, a star player. If like were star new players. molds of star players and stuff. Sure. Sure. I mean, wouldn't you would keep buying these until you got one of each? I would figure out the way behind like buy six at a time get the whole case that way i have all of them something like that but yeah okay but still you would you would spend you know uh 72 Mm dollars on six figures anyways i don't know if they'll ever do that this is series three i noticed i hope not so let's not give them ideas i kind of hope not and at the same time it'd be kind of fun but i'm a guy who wants extra lineman pieces for teams so like i like how you just default to linemen like someone's like i really want to pay 12 bucks for a random lineman position no not that hear me out the necro team just came out okay Mm -hmm. by me and steve's standards we would have a couple more zombies even though we'll never need them yep because to fill them out but what if they came out with a little display of six different zombie poses that we did not get in our team set. No. Would you not buy two more of these? No. You would buy them. That's why you don't want... That's why no. you're saying no. Because they're zombies. Okay, I might I buy them because it's Blood Bowl and I am stupid. I'll give you that. Okay. But I might buy It's I might a buy them. zombie. Okay. If it was Ulfwerner, okay, now we're talking. Okay. Something along those lines. Or a Chaos Dwarf or, you know, whatever. Something positional wise that was unique, or coaches, or sideline figures. A uh, imagine a series that had the couple of new Sylvanian star players, and the rest of the figures were linemen, so they're at least usable. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's different. But that'd be that way. If you bought one and you got the zombie yeah. one, at least you go. Well, I got an extra zombie for my team. And if you got a star player, upset. then you're happy too. Yeah. Anyways, I kind of hope they don't do that and. <laughs> A part of me does, but I want them to be cheaper. But well, anyways. This ends you... Scott's sidelines. <laughs> if there are sideline figures, you'd buy them? Yes. Yeah, no okay. doubt. All right. Enough of that. Are you ready to jump into this Spike magazine? Yeah. So I guess uh, if anyone wants to know what we're doing, we're jumping into the Spike magazine we got early because GW loves us. And we love right. them. And as always, but... there's no caveats. We can say what we want and we will. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in. All right. We'll be right back. We are back and we're going to be looking at Spike Magazine 11, the Necromantic Horrors. Yes. Uh, I've still not, I don't know why they added horror, but I guess it makes it different. Yeah. Makes it a little different. Um, so (laughs) something different about us reviewing this spike is, is Steve does not have one in hand because we only have one copy. And I realized right before we were recording that he doesn't have one. (laughs) So unfortunately, hopefully we won't have to read too much from this because you don't want me to read. That's true. No, we'll Um, just go over it. Something major. All right. So we got a spike 11. The first thing to talk about is. If you don't like the art of the box, you're definitely not going to like the art of this cover. I can see that. That I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but if you compare it to all the other covers, it is much more cartoony, put it that way. Oh, for sure on that. Um Yeah. And there's spike. there's nothing different about this spike. I know we have a whole new rule change. 
It doesn't mention anything about the new passing ability unless it's in the, the strategy guide, which I did not read, which is highly possible. They, they mentioned, you know, I believe they mentioned passing a little bit. Yeah, but they didn't say it was new or anything. No, so there's no, no, no change to the format. There's nothing like that. It's just another Spike magazine. If I was lost to see and I walked into the first place I walked into was a GW store and I only saw this magazine, I might not notice that the, you know, the little Blood Bowl symbol on the cover is now in the new style. Yeah. Um, if I didn't know there was a new edition out, I would just think this is a regular Blood Bowl until I got to like the team layout where it shows the passing <laughs> stats. So you're right about that. There's nothing on the opening page or inside that says, hey, this is, you know, Blood Bowl season two or anything like that. Um, you know, get the new rule book here. It doesn't say that anywhere really except for, well, we'll mention it when we get there. So. <clears throat> You open the cover, just like always, they show the players painted, the painted miniatures, and their names. So some of the standout names for different people, Carl Borislav, or Borisov for the Flesh Golem, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, Boris Karlov. Right. Um, Casper, the Unfriendly Wraith. Yeah. Bob the Brain Grimmin. Bobby the Brain Heenan. Maybe. It's a stretch, but I th think so. Might be. There's a guy named Brain Strawman, which might have been Braun, Braun Strowman. Strowman. Oh, yeah, that could be. Braun Strowman, the pro wrestler? I yeah. don't know. There's one that's a Vilga Flesh uh, Chewer. He's a ghoul runner. Yeah. Thrilling Jack, who's just a zombie lineman. I think that might be Howling Jack, but he'd be a werewolf. Well, we have Grawl Wolfie Kessler. He's the werewolf. Yeah, I don't know about that. And then Doran Von Rok Raku? I don't know. He's the one in the story, the son. Oh, oh on, that's right. On the back cover, we got Gregor Von Romargo, so George Romero. Mm hmm. Johan Scarecrone. Uh, Jonathan Crane, Scarecrow. From right, Batman. from Batman. Uh huh. Nov. Val Norville Rogers. You know who that is? Nor Norville Norville Rogers. You know who that is? I want is your as soon as you mention it, I'm gonna go like, oh yeah. It's but Shaggy. No. Okay. Norville oh, yeah. Shaggy Rogers. You're right. You're right. So I'm sure there's other puns there that we're missing because we're Americans. Uh but, Luca Grafing. I don't know. That's another werewolf. And then Boo Stone the Spook, who's a wraith. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, there's got to be something else there, but those are the ones I saw. A lot more pun-influenced names here. But the way than... that we would do it, not Oh, I'm not bad. complaining. Not the guacamole craters or <laughs> glottal stop or some stupid stuff like that. No, these, these are fine. These are, yeah, these are like fine. Them. It was just... Uh, very spooky theme, you know, yeah. ways. And they presented in a way that I really enjoyed. Um, let's see. Page one is a little, you know, editorial thing. Like you get always, it doesn't talk anything. Like even a side note that, you know, the new rules are here. <laughs> it, it's such a catch 22 because I love that they keep everything in world, but that's to the detriment sometimes. Because like this, it would be nice if there was just a little bit of blurb to speak to us in real talk. Like, hey, everybody, welcome to the first issue of the Blood Bowl second season. Um, there's been some changes, but, you know, everything's pretty much the same. There's gonna be blah, blah, blah. Is it really needed? No, it's not. So that's why they didn't do it. But it just seems kind of odd. I think the comic book guys and me and you like that stuff because... Yeah. You know, we grew up in a time where if you picked up a comic, you know, you're always supposed to let everybody know that this is Wolverine. He's what he does isn't pretty mm -hmm. and what he, you know, and he has, to, you know, it's just kind of that intro couple of frames. So I think yeah. that's what we think. And about. we're used to hearing from the editor. I mean, even though this is hearing from the in-house editor in Fluffy. Right. All right. Uh, page two and three goes into the kind of the 
necromantic horror teams it just kind of walks you through you know how the the kind of origin of it how they scout talent the positions of the zombie linemen goes into page four the ghoul runners the wraiths the werewolves and the flesh golems and i believe this is the part where it tells you like the very first teams of the necromantic horror teams were just zombies and then they started adding positions as they go to become more and more competitive yeah um page five goes into the necromantic horror team roster um it's kind of i don't know i don't know if it's kind of what you expect or not uh, <laughs> But because everything's kind of new and I keep forgetting, like maybe not everybody, somebody might be listening to this episode for the first time. Yeah. Um, so, so we got zombie linemen that nothing's changed on them. Um, they're still 40 K. They do not have a passing stat. Now they can't pass at all. I mean, they can, but they're always going to do the wildly inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And they have no access to the passing skills, <laughs> which makes um, sense. I still disagree with we a little know. bit that we put, huh? We know. I still think every, I think that's what makes Blood Bowl so amazing is like, oh, Steve's at Chaos Cup. He's still playing a game. And I run over there and it's like, well, he's got to pick up in traffic with the zombie lineman. And then he's got to throw a bomb with the zombie lineman. And I've, you roll a six. I've done it before, you, obviously. I know. And but, you dodge for a four yeah. and then you throw on a six and you make it. And then the catch goes to one and you reroll it and it's a one. And that's what <laughs> makes Blood Bowl exciting. And I, I can't believe that I'm taking the fluff side over you taking the game mechanic side from a fluff standpoint zombie ain't going to throw he's just not we live in all a of these people who can't throw would not throw flesh golem possibly but we'll get to that well my well i'm gonna go on I know. uh so you can still take two ghoul runners they're now 75k they have uh the only new stat for them is that plus four to passing uh you can take two wraiths now wraiths have changed they're 95k they, they've changed they now exist well i guess they exist they used to be <laughs> uh whites yeah um there's six three strength three plus edge no passing the passing ability and then they have nine plus armor they come with block foul appearance no hands regeneration sidestep it's interesting to see oh and the primary is again primary and secondary instead of singles and doubles uh oh, primary that's... is general and strength secondary is agility so the race are interesting and i can tell you from play testing uh played with a necromantic team because i really wanted to see like how does a team do when you only have like one or two players or four at max that can actually throw the ball. Mm -hmm. um, I never was in a situation where I needed that, but I didn't think I'd like the race. And after playing a few games, I kind of liked the race. That sidestep is a big deal. I was going to say block, foul appearance, and sidestep. Yeah, that's yeah. annoying yeah. as heck. Yep. Uh, two werewolves. The, in cr the price has increased on the werewolves. It's 125K now. Still eight movement, uh, three strength, three plus edge. Uh, passings four plus. Armor is nine plus. Um, and then primary is agility and uh, general. And then secondary is passing and strength. Still same claws, skills. Frenzy regen. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we got two flesh golems. They have been, they've increased a little bit too. So they're one, uh, one fifteen K. Uh, four strength, four movement, edge four plus, armor nine or ten plus. Boy, it's hard to say all those pluses <laughs> when you're so used to nine armor and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but it's so much better. <clears throat> it's still the same, Scott. It's just worded different. Mm -hmm. um, regeneration, stand firm, thick skull. Then they have primary s skills. They can get general and strength and secondary agility. Um, Three rolls is still seventy k. Right. Um, no special rules. Yeah, go ahead. No apothecary, right? They can raise the dead. Uh, Masters of the Undead gives them that, right, Steve? Right. The special rules now, Masters of Undeath, allows them to raise the dead. Now, Necro couldn't used to do that, right? No, it was Necro just could. undead. It was, it was Kimry that couldn't. They were the undead team oh, that was it? couldn't. Okay, yeah. then. I didn't play him that often. 
So, and they have Sylvanian spotlight access to stars. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with the new rules, the new rules for teams now give keywords and like the special rules for masters of the undead says they can raise the dead. And like the goblins have one where they can get bribes for cheaper. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the star players have this, you know, these keywords too, Sylvanian spotlight and kind of what this allows GW to do is that at any point they could, they could go change something just by changing a key word if they wanted to like, Oh, now, now Morg has Sylvanian spotlight. So he can play with any team. Um, Or I even thought, and this is crazy and stupid, but I thought they could make a model because I believe this time of year they make a, or lately they've been making like a Christmas model. I know I picked up a goblin that had like a, a Santa hat and stuff on last year. And I believe they did that again this year with a little uh, dwarf drinking uh, 40k model. But they could do this with Blood Bowl star players at Christmas time, and it's a uh, Christmas Griff. And this Griff is only gonna only gonna play with like halflings, and so he he has that one special keyword if they wanted to. That'd be convoluted, but yeah. But I mean, they they could is what I'm saying. Like yeah, that's interesting. You could actually have different versions of the star players. Right, you could say, you hmm. know, um, not Zara the Slayer. Who's the other one? Who's the new Carla one? Carla Von uh, Kill. Ka- Carla Von Kill. This one w- will play with Chaos Dwarves. Why? Because she was trapped in the Badlands and, you know, she had to pay off her debt. So sure. she was a slave for a while. And so <laughs> she has the Badlands keyword. And she's not official, but she's yeah. unofficial. So definitely anyways, an interesting idea. They could do stuff like that. They could even release cards into like uh, White Dwarf magazines that say that, mm-hmm. you know um eligible star players you ready yes uh bryce the slice campbell who it's a chainsaw guy that we've seen before in spike magazines he was with the uh undead mm-hmm. frankenstein he was also in the undead right right but neither one of them existed in 2020 rules until now okay that's so, what i want to be clear since. yeah and we've ask your forgiveness if we're not being clear on this because we don't know what people don't know yet and <laughs> obviously you guys haven't seen the we assume most people had seen the rules the lease the leaks that's why we don't think about it but in the actual rule book that came out the sylvanian spotlight only had four star players so with right. this magazine it adds three to that that'd be bryce frank and then wilhelm Right, Wilhelm Cheney's in this for mm-hmm. the first time. Uh, Grack and Crumpleberry are listed as two separate star players, although you have to take them together. I find that one weird, don't you? Yeah, it's odd that it does that. I think it's just trying to make it look bigger than it is. Uh, no, I, I don't find it weird that they gave them two separate little like head spaces on this page. That they're playing for the undead. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I was kind of like... It sounds like Grack and Crumpleberry are going to play for anybody. Is what they, I'm getting they do. At. They absolutely do. They they are in every single um, special rule. Now I get that they're like a sideshow act, and like not too many people are going to get them to kick a player around and stuff because mm-hmm. it's very unreliable. But I don't know. That's kind of weird to me. But you know, that's whatever. Just what they are. Um, we got Scroll uh, Half Height, the undead uh, dwarf thrower, star player. Uh, we have Helmet Wolf. We In- have interesting thing about Helmet Wolf; he's the only other player that plays for every team. So it's just those, the that couple, and then him, right? Yeah. I guess they just wanted everybody to have at least one chainsaw access. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Gretchen Wachner, the Blood Bowl Widow, and we've seen her in the Undead uh, Spike magazine. Yeah. Now. Here is the one place in the magazine that I remember where it tells you the rules for Frankenstein, Wilhelm Cheney, and Bryce the Slice Campbell can be found later in this issue. The rules for the other star players listed above can be found in the Blood Bowl rule book. Right. That's good. Um, so this is the only place that you can see that. I still find it weird that they won't put like a website there, but I guess people are smart enough to Google stuff. So I guess I assume my dad's going to play blood bowl and he's going to read this and still be lost, but <laughs> well, there's no website to look up stats. Right. 
Mm, that's true. Um, turning to page nine, we have the famous necromantic horror teams. Uh, I, I love a lot of this. Um, they talk about the Brundar Grimjacks, which was like a team from second edition. That's where Frankenstein came from is he played for the Brunner Grimjacks and he was the only star player for them. And when I was in ninth grade, that's the only thing we had to go on on the Brunner <laughs> Grimjacks is like, they must be undead, but like, he's not really undead. So we decided that they were just humans who had Frankenstein, which fits the current fluff because Frankenstein can play for humans. Well, and I mean, in that story, it basically tells the, that the, Brunder Grimjacks were a human team. A human right? team, right, yeah. And they went off on a mission and came back all messed up. Exactly. So And Frank I, and Stein were two players before, now put into one. Oh, we just ruined that. We oh, just saved that for the other page. You goofball. Well, whatever. Um then it talks about the pumpkin patch petrifiers. Um, another undead team. We have the Wolfenheim Werewolfingheim Wanderers that started off as the Wolfingheim Wanderers. And once they introduced to werewolves, they went ahead and just changed their name. And wasn't uh, there a second ed team called the Wanderers that was werewolves? There was an Albion Wanderers. Okay. And there was a World's Edge Wanderers, a dwarf team oh, and okay. a human team. So, so neither one totally fits, but wanders is like a good go-to name it's like mm -hmm. the tigers <laughs> if there's a lot of team named tigers here in america there's a lot of teams named the wanderers <laughs> in the old world uh crimson cadavers is a team that's made up of totally zombies and the, the fluff behind them is you know they had all white team uh, uniforms and there's so much blood and goop that they just became red so that's what they're called i wish they would have given them one werewolf what's what? that I wish they would have given them one werewolf. I do too. And why do you say that? Because of Thriller. Oh, okay. Why do you? Um, because somewhere in it could have been an old Slurp Bowl tournament or something. They had like a play pure or it's some rule set in some tournament that we never went to. Yeah. Or maybe it's something we played on Fumble where you had to play all of the lineman character, like all zombies plus a werewolf. Yeah. And I don't know if we did that online. Oh. Did, didn't did we do that? I don't know. I, uh, somewhere along the lines, there was alternate rules, and they called that the... I think they did call that the thriller team. Now yeah, that, say it's that. always been the thriller team. At, there was a team also that had nothing but thralls and one vampire, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, I forgot what they were called. They were just called, like, pure teams or something like that i can't remember okay that's where i remember it from and i think yeah i think you're right it was called a thriller team um page seven the wolfenburg crypt Steelers, which is the team that the box set is named after it goes into the origin of this team now this is the one with the mayor right yeah uh the mayor who he loved blood bowl and he wanted the team so bad that blah 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 Right. His son. Uh, we don't want to played. get too much into it because we want you guys to read it and enjoy it. That's true. Um, it's it's good fluff. I enjoyed it. Um, I will say it's you know, it's good fluff because it matches the team name and I still remember it. <laughs> That's a great point. I mean, truthfully, there's been a lot of magazines where we've read stories about the main team and I couldn't tell you much about them. Um, I agree. And this is one of those team names where I don't hate it. I also don't love it. It's, and it's then I, junky. And then I, huh? It's junky. It's just like, it doesn't roll off the tongue well. It's very clunky. Wolfenburg Crypt Steelers. Yeah. I'm assuming that's like Pittsburgh Steelers. Or don't know. maybe not. Maybe it has nothing to do with just it. Just is what it is. It's a little clunky to say you're right. But once I read this... I was fine with it and I accepted it. Yeah. And I didn't hate it anymore. So while I was still both down approved name, it's it definitely, wasn't my favorite team. Name, yeah. Say so. It's definitely Pittsburgh Steelers, but, but like I said, yeah, this is where I think <laughs> this is when I can tell I like a spike or not. When I read something after they give them some time to explain it. And then I go, Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. And it changes my mind. Uh, page nine. 
has the Hall of Fame team of the 2496 to 2497 squad of the Wolfenburg Crip Steelers. Am I wrong in saying that they don't have the players numbered here? Or, or You're the one looking the... at it. Okay. <laughs> in the past spikes, yeah. did they have numbers for players? I'm like pretty player sure, yeah. One, player... This one has no numbers. Hmm. It lists the players, yeah. but it doesn't say Luca Fangberg's number one. Now, it's the first one listed, but it doesn't say number one, number two, number three. Oh, um, also on page eight. Uh, that's the one where they messed up with the the Grimjacks, right? Yes. Um, it was talking about a match. Let's see if I can find it here. This should be the one on the bottom left. Yeah, there was talking about the... Crip Steelers make it all to the all the way to the civilian night time league final in 2485, narrowly missing out on the title by losing two to one to the Hellfin Hellions when the Crip Steelers zombies all got distracted when the referee suddenly dropped dead, beginning a fading frenzy and allowing the Grim Jacks to score to run in the winning touchdown. Yeah. So, so somewhere they screwed along that up. The yeah, they screwed that up. They it should have been, somebody corrected something and uh, didn't correct the other spot. So yeah, it happens, but it's unfortunate. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty good though, since that's, I think one of the only few things you found wrong. Yeah. Well, it definitely is. Um, like I said, they had no numbers on the players. I, f- I found that different. It did say like they had some special rules here for the uh, Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers. Uh, they're going to get you the Wolfenburg Crypt, Crypt Steelers. See, that's why it doesn't roll off the tongue. I, I can't know. say it. Uh, have garnered themselves a reputation as a scary team for anyone to face, something the Crypt Steeler fans love to remind their opponents. Chance of they're going to get you ring, often ring out in any Wolfenburg home game, causing much distress for the opposition. During the opposing team's first turn of any drive, any standing player on the Wolfenburg Crip Steelers is counted as having disturbing presence skill. It's neat. Cool. But disturbing presence, not foul appearance. Yeah, I realized like when I read this, it was like, that is really freaking awesome. It gives a big advantage. And then I was like, oh, eh, it's just disturbing presence. Yeah. So just, I don't know. It's not, so it's not that big a deal. Not as big a deal as I thought. And no, maybe foul that's, appearance would be a big deal. Yeah, that would be really huge. And maybe that's what they meant and messed that up, but I don't know. It's possible. Um, page 10 and page 11 talk about Frankenstein. And as Steve has already let the cat out of the bag, Frankenstein is two players. Do you remember what those players are? Frank and some guy with the last name Stein. <laughs> You're exactly right. If I, I don't even know if I can find it here. Actually, why don't we not? Uh, yeah, Frank, people can read about it. Franklin Smith and Steiner S. Scottward. Oh, Scott, obviously named Scott after me. Steiner. Yeah, it could be Scott Steiner. Um, this I thought was really cool, actually. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and it's I, just a very easy way to make the name make sense too. Yeah, because like we know where they got Frank N. Stein from, but now with the N being two people that they cobbled together to make one person, I thought this was really cool. Mm -hmm. It was a good, fluffy explanation. It didn't seem stupid or hokey, and it made a lot of sense. Yeah, it made me like it a lot better. I mean, like I went from Frankenstein, ah, he's a Frankenstein character. I get it, Mm -hmm. to like, oh, now I really like this guy. He's never been one of my favorites. Now I've always enjoyed the model and stuff. Yeah. But I've never like been a guy like, Oh, I really love that character. So that was neat. Good job. GW on that. It goes through his career highlights. Um, I thought some of the career highlight things in some of these pages were almost copies and pastes from the, the stories that they yeah. told. And that that is one thing that seems very glaring on this issue that we haven't seen before is, you know, normally you get the story, and then you get the career highlights, at least like the little four little blurbs afterwards. Mm-hmm. And sure, it recants the same stuff, but they word it differently. 
Whereas here, it's almost verbatim, just a copy. Right. So the fact that you and I both independently notice it this time means that there's something different there. Correct. And that might just be like, maybe they didn't have time. Yeah, that's fine. Or, just, or somebody felt like they didn't have to rewrite it. Yeah. Or add something to it. I wish at least one of them would have been like something a little bit different. But yeah, that's being really nitpicky. It is. Um, I don't know if other people would even notice <laughs> it. So, But, you know. That's why we give her opinions. Uh, page 13 is Dirt from the Dugout with Mindy Pie Whistle. It's the standard, you know, she's having the conversation, talking about stuff. And then page 14 and 15 is everybody's jerky Blood Bowl star player. If you're not a fan of the podcast or haven't listened to a million episodes of us yet, I don't like Wilhelm Cheney. So he's <laughs> a jerk and he's been on our podcast before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the past, when I've hired him, he always rolls terrible. Mm -hmm. So screw William Cheney. I hate him. No disagreement over here. <laughs> um, Actually, if you're a Wilhelm Cheney fan, this is fine. It's just a, it talks about Wilhelm Cheney. They really pass along the lore that, you know, if you get bit by a werewolf, you become a werewolf type thing. I don't hate the art, but I hate this art. Yeah. This particular piece. I mean, like to introduce you to Wilhelm Cheney, him holding the ball in his mouth while it's probably how he would carry the ball. I just don't like this for an intro. No, it's not a good look. It's dynamic small, and interesting, but no. If this was another picture somewhere amongst this, it would be fine. But I want I wanted the big grizzly, him rising up as the big mm -hmm. you know, werewolf. Anyways, that's again, that's being just nitpicky. They call him the Wolfman, though. Have you noticed that? Wilhelm Cheney, the Wolfman. Oh, yeah. So he's getting his own nickname. Everybody's got to have but, a nickname. Uh, page 16 starts the Sylvanian Nighttime Leagues. I really, really enjoyed this. And I yeah, don't know what you I'd, thought about this. I thought it was a nice little tweak of a league system. Um, this goes into, this actually covers pages 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, uh, 20, 20, uh, yeah, 2021 kind of. Okay. Maybe even through page 22, we'll talk about all these things here. The first four pages talk about the Spooky Skull Cup. It is like its own Sylvanian like, league or tournament. And it has its own special rules. It talks about their own inducements. Um, one of these inducements is in zone spirits that you can hire. And if you had you know, 50K line in your uh, inducement money, you can hire these uh, end zone spirits. And basically they're there. If somebody tries to walk into the end zone, they have to roll. If they roll a one, they trip. So remember how we yeah. always say trip wire? Oh yeah. Or somebody grab my feet. Alcorn they, cup with the um, pit, or, pit traps. Or, exactly. Or yeah. If you've listened to our podcast enough, you know about the Alcorn cup where we've done this same thing. So they're listening to some great ideas from both down. That's for sure. <laughs> It even talks about like the glittering prizes the, from the Spooky Skull Cup. They fit in uh, the Coffin Corner article into this league stuff yeah, as a sidebar, which I'm fine with. I just didn't know if you noticed that. They talk about uh, their own weather table, the Dark of the Night weather table. Mm -hmm. um, they have a thunderstorm, which I think is awesome because it makes lightning rain down upon you and yeah. could hurt your players. I think that's really neat. They have a um, fog, which I thought was cool. They have a fog, and then they have a, it's so dark you can't even see it in front of your face, and you just can't, you know, it can't pass at all. And if you declare a blitz action for somebody who's more than three squares away, you, you just can't see that player. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting. It is. It's a lot of just, you know, new little tweaks to things that fit the thematic. Uh, they have their own Sylvanian kickoff table. This is a, uh, kind of like the main kickoff table except they've replaced some things you have like hungry fans um where i believe let's see was the team scored the lowest uh randomly selects one player in their dugout immediately make an injury roll so the fans get hungry and eat a player in the <laughs> bench uh there's a chilling howl there's throwing pumpkins where they can throw pumpkins on the field kind of like a throwing rock right 
about half of these are the same. You got high kick, cheering fans, brilliant coaching still, changing weather, quick snap. You have a zombified hand on the roll of a 10. Sometimes even parts of the undead can keep moving when separated from the original body. Both coaches roll as D6, the team that scored the lowest, or if both teams, in case of a tie, randomly selects one of their players in the pitch. That player has been grabbed by a zombified hand. Until the end of the drive, reduce that player's MA by one. I think that's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I don't know how often it would come into effect. You have Boo on 11. Um, don't read Ghost everything. And, don't read everything? Okay. They got to buy the book if they want to see some of the stuff. That's true. That's true. I, I feel like this has already been released, even though I know. I know. It, it, we're so used to everything being out already. Like, no, this isn't all out. So, Anyways, Boo's obvious the thing that deals with us ghosts and specters and then there's like the restless dead so yeah. you have some different kickoff tables which is great they even have uh additional post-game sequence rules so you can go through these things you even have do you remember this thing where you can like modify your dead people yeah you remember this steve again we're not going over every little thing I, I want to talk about it so bad. I know. Anyways, you can hire a crappy necromancer to enhance your players. And in some cases, you might get like a mutation on your dead people that they can keep. It is pretty neat. So I do think that's neat. Yeah. Um, on page 21, we have the necromantic horror. Uh, it actually tells you the rules for the Blood Bowl pitch. I didn't notice that. Yes, on page 21, it tells you the exact rules for the Necromantic Horror Blood Bowl pitch, hmm. which I found very odd, interesting. I mean, it's good. I, I mean, I don't know if this is the exact one if you bought the Necromantic pitch. Yeah, like that's what maybe it, those rules are different. But if you wanted to play Themy and you bought just this but not the pitch, you would have the rules right here. Yeah, and if you did buy the pitch, then it's much better carrying that book around than having to try to carry whatever you know is in the pitch. I, I definitely agree with that. So that's a nice addition. Uh, as long as it's the same. If it's different, then you know it's just something extra. I mean, it could be different. I don't know about that. Yeah, and we haven't seen the new pitch yet, so we don't know. There's a little sidebar here of Blast from the Past, which talks about like fashion in Slovenia. So it's just a fluffy little article there. Page 22 talks about necromantic balls, the pumpkin ball, the stitch brain ball. <laughs> These reminded me of critter bowl. Mm-hmm. I can see that Be- because on the st- stitch brain ball, you roll a D six and one of them is a troll brain. And this is exactly what we had for the baby troll ball. The player carrying the ball gains the really stupid trait while in possession of this ball. <laughs> Somebody's listening. Just saying. If you're going to get ideas from anyone, might as well get it from the best, right? I think you're exactly right. <laughs> um, not to give away all these, uh, you can get an infected brain, a possessed brain, a human brain, a dwarf brain, and an elf brain. The elf you know brain allows be, the player. You know, huh? what, you know what would be kind of cool? What's is that? if they did a ball pack. Like a set of cards that had rules for each ball. Because you know how Blitz Bowl 2 has that? Yeah. It'd be kind of kinda neat cool. to have that for, you know, just for shits and giggles. You want to play with different rules? Here you go. Yeah. Because we all have all those extra balls that, you know, most people don't use. Well, that's true. Uh, Elf Brain. A player carrying this ball gains the dodge skill while in their possession. That's kind of neat, too. Yeah. Um,. Good stuff there. I like all these all these additional, like, if you want to use these rules, if you don't, if you want to use this for your Sylvanian League, you could. You don't yeah. have to. Page 23 is a chat with the rat. He's talking again with um, some people who, from the uh, Brunder Grimjacks, a player from them, the Necromantic, Necromancer from there. And then page 24, 25, and the next couple of pages here talk about the article is called trick or treat. It's, you know, h- how do you play this team? If you're the first time playing them, it breaks down the positionals again, you know, 
yeah. how much does the player cost? What's their skills? What's their primary and all this? And it's good that they're still doing that. Because if you're a new player, especially now, if you're getting into the game, this is going to be your first introduction to the strategy. It's nice that it's there. Personally, these are the most, maybe the worst couple of pages to me because I played Blood Bowl forever. Yeah. But yeah. this is very much needed for players like Jennifer or just new people coming to the game for the first time. For sure, yeah. So that way they don't set up like their ghoul runners on the on the line of scrimmage or anything. Well, like it lets that. I mean the rules are one thing. The rules tell you how to play the game. It doesn't tell you the meta of why you would play things certain ways. So it's nice even at that level to get someone to tell you, okay, now that you know how to make a team, let's understand what each position does and how it can affect the rest of the game. I mean that's a big difference for someone just getting into a game. I totally agree with that. I mean, I don't, um, I don't know of like, and it's probably out there. But if I played forty k, and I just bought the box, oh, is gosh, there yes. going to be a magazine or something out there that gives me a hint on how to, you know, understand the positions and use them better in the game? I agree. Um, I'm saying from a pl- fluff standpoint, which is the main reason I buy. Oh, from us, the spikes. No. Yeah, we don't read it. Um, I don't know if I've ever read a spike where they've had something where I go, oh, I didn't realize that and change how I play. Now, I'm not a great player either, so maybe I should listen more. I just play by instinct. I don't want to learn. Page 26 has more of this kind of like how to play. It gives you uh, starting rosters, a couple of options. And explains why. I think that's really good, especially for new players. No, and that's a big deal. I mean, like I said, you know, when you're first getting into the game, any information like that helps. And I think it's good for even tournament players who are just going in and you go to a tournament where you only have one million to build your your team. You can at least get a a ballpark. Um, This, I might have used. I might have thought about this with the Snotling team since that was a new team I've never played. And when I saw this, so when I was thinking about taking Snotlings to Chaos Cup, yeah, uh, they have development here, so it kind of breaks down of like if you have a zombie, here's the primary skills I would give them. You know, for example, block, kick, dirty player. If I had a secondary, I'd give them, you know, guard. You know, then it shows you like stat increases if you should take them, if you shouldn't, which I don't you think... don't get to choose those, right? I mean, rules. you have to save up 18 points now and the... then randomly roll. Right. Well, this is telling you basically on most of these players, it's not good to save up for that and roll because like... No, it's not. Z- zombies, the only one that you really want is strength, according to this. Yeah. And even then, eh. Is, I get, is I guess they have one... to say that, though. Yeah, but is plus one strength worth two or three skills? Because we're talking 18, that's at least two skills. You're probably talking to the wrong two guys because (laughs) we are really a fan of taking the cheap random skill and dealing with it. Right. That's, you know. (laughs) That's the one thing with the new rules. I don't know if I'm ever going to save up and go. No, a a random stat. And again, for people who don't know yet. Now you have to spend star player points to get something. So the first skill, you can spend three to get a random prime skill, six to get a chosen prime skill or a random secondary, 12, a chosen secondary, 18 is a random stat increase. So if we're looking at 18, if we just go random skills, that is three skills that the person could have instead. Yeah. That's a huge, or one chosen skill and two randoms. But doesn't it increase with each one? Yeah. But still. Uh, it's still it's 18 if you go random every first three? Three, four, six. Okay. So that's only 13. As I said, you could even choose your first skill for six, take a random second one, so that's four for 10, and then six for the third one, 16. You can get one chosen Two random for the price of one random stat increase. I cannot understand when anyone is going to do that. Unless you just have a great figure 
They've got all the skills they need, and you go ahead and do it. Save for that last skill. Yeah. But Here's that's the deal. A, that's, a, that's a lot, because that last skill, if it's legend, last skill, random stat increase, 50 star player points. I think the most intriguing thing about the new set in playing like a league, what excites me the most is trying to, I'm not going to get enough by playing one team. This is where I wish we bring back our at home league with our friends Mm -hmm. because I would like to try out several teams and decide like, do I have the patience to wait for a skill I really need versus taking a chance? And Um, how does those teams play versus random teams or, you know, We could even, like, now, a tournament, you could win a random stat increase. And that's huge. I mean, that just, you know, it takes up one of your slots, your next slot. But that could be huge. And if you get passing and you don't want it, you could just take a, you know, a chosen secondary skill. So it allows for a lot of different opportunities for gameplay, and it definitely changes the meta of how to progress a team. So, like I said, this this page is helpful. It will be helpful for people who are brand new. See the see the box set. This is their first team. They know, oh, with a Wraith, maybe I should take Mighty Blow as my first skill, or Guard, or Tackle, yeah. and Frenzy. So that's good. I, I, and I think when I say these are the least interesting to me, I think these are very much needed in the magazine. So don't. Yeah, think. no, we, we've, we've been clear with that. Okay. Page 28, 29 is like the setup defensively and offensively, even though while I don't think I necessarily need to read these things, I do because, you know, they might show me something I never <laughs> thought of. Yeah, those and might that, be real helpful. Yeah, I'm glad you don't read those. Um. Then on page 30 and 31, we have a player spotlight on Bryce, the slice Campbell. And that's pretty interesting on, you know, him and all his, his kind of his origin and his career highlights, which I believe are kind of like the same in his origin. Mm -hmm. Then on page 32 and 33, we have the new inducements. Uh, First one is a infamous coaching staff inducement, professor uh, Frankenheim which is obviously uh, like a Frankenstein type, Dr. Frankenstein type character. Oh, this is where I messed up, Steve. Remember when I was talking about the necromancer that could give you a permanent, like maybe mutation? Yeah. That was wrong. You could buy an inducement to raise the dead of a player that died in a Sylvanian league. That's what that was all about. Oh, okay. And they could be like a terrible zombie or only like used one time or a great I, zombie. I thought I misread something, but no, it's like, okay. So, so I, I had that, it. I had that wrong. So I'm glad we figured that out. This is an inducement that costs, I'm trying to see here, 130 gold pieces. And this is where you can experiment on somebody on one of your players. And it tells you when this takes place in a pregame sequence after step four but before step five randomly select d3 players on your team they're eligible to play during this game these players have been modified by the professor until the end of the game each selected player gains a single randomly selected skill from the mutation category however at the start of step three of the post game sequence roll a d6 for each of these players unless they suffered and did not recover um, from the game a casualty table result being dead basically if they don't die you take care of this they take an injury what's that or if they just take an injury it doesn't have to be dead okay then they don't have to worry about this yeah um real quick the chart on this is uh number one the experiment proves a bit of a failure uh the player immediately loses the skill in addition the player must miss the next game so that's really bad Mm -hmm. um then you have Two through five, the experiment proved only short-lived success. The player immediately loses the skill. And if you actually roll the six on one of these players, the professor's experiment had proven a success. The player retains the skill without having to spend the SPP. You must adjust their value accordingly as if the player had randomly selected a secondary skill. How awesome would this be to, like, get a guy 
that's randomly selected and gets like horns random or tentacles yeah. i think th- i love this it is neat and it's very hard to get i mean you gotta... now this is only on the sylvanian spotlight special team rules i i almost wish this was for anybody yeah but what this does open up is is like i thought about the idea how they introduced the rules for the Sil- sylvanian league or tournament here mm-hmm. that anybody could do even at like a store tournament or a store league they also maybe eventually they'll have maybe in your chaos dwarf uh spike magazine they're going to have rules for a chaos cup where they introduce something like this sure infamous you know the 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 cup touching them and blessing them with some type of mutation i don't know that's just something i thought of uh the other inducement is uh, a wizard inducement the wicked witch she has the zap skill and she has a plague of warts uh spell as well and uh you can read all that when you read the magazine uh Turning somebody into frogs is not a bad idea. And the playing awards is kind of like a almost a 50-50 spell, but it could be really bad if somebody got that. And then we have the little Blood Bowl car- comic done by the same people, Nick uh, Keim and uh, Christian... I can't pronounce his last name. Schwager? His last... It's Schwager. Chris... No, that's not Christian Schwager, is it? Nah, I thought it was Crenshaw. Or, uh... I'm trying to find Prinslow. it here. It is Schwager. Okay. Christian Schwager, Schwager, S C H W A G E R. Okay, yeah. And Nick and Nick Keim, who wrote the latest Blood Bowl comic that came out a few years ago, he also wrote this too. So it's a little three-page comic of the vamps and all that, all those goodies. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, it's fast, yeah. but it's good. It's fast. It is fast. It's fast, but it's good. And then at the very back of the magazine, of course, was more of those painted miniatures that we've mm-hmm. already talked about and a cool little illustration. Um, but so there o- you go. Overall, it's a quality content. Don't have too many issues with it. The couple of mistakes, or at least the one mistake. Um, but it's really enjoyable. It, it feels so much better than... I don't think we've had a bad spike, but... I do think we had some spikes that didn't feel like they got enough attention yeah. or, you know, or they didn't pay attention or they kind of just like, Oh man, I just got to get this done. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe that was the case. They might've had one week to put it all together. We don't know. You know, we never know this, but this one felt really good. It did exactly what it's supposed to do, which is make me, you know, think about maybe I should open that box of new Necro team and, you know, take a different approach, not use my old models, use my new models and let's go play some Necro and have fun. So my only real complaint with it is it comes out the same week as the the new box set with the new rules. Why can't they have those stars in the rule book? That would have made things a lot easier. I agree with that. I don't, I don't get that. I mean, they want to sell the magazine. That's fine. I get it. But now, if someone wants all the rules for the game, you have to buy the book and the magazine. Is it, is it possible that with COVID and everything that the, the whole, the box set should have came out like a month ago with this coming out? No. Now? You don't no. think so? No, the Not box set was always going to be coming out in the end of the year. Well, is it possible that this is just released early? Mm, Traditionally, we've had have... stuff for released right before christmas no because it should have come out with halloween too so i don't know it just seems odd it's not a huge deal but it's just kind of a little annoying is it possible that this could have been set to come out before they decided to go with the new blood bowl edition and no. then they just modified it no definitely not oh you know everything don't you? i do but no that oh. would just be weird <laughs> anyways I thought it was a really good spike. Yeah. It was really fun to read. I soaked it in in one sitting, which is great to do. It, like I said, hats off to these guys. The The biggest thing besides that one little error from the Hellions to the Grimjacks or the, you know, it should have been vice versa, mm-hmm. is some of those game highlights felt completely copy and paste repeated. They did. And not rewarded enough to feel different. But so be it. If I, those are my minor complaints, then they still did a pretty good job. So yeah, 
I think everybody should buy this. If you're out there listening and you weren't going to buy this again, it's great fluff. It helps you. It should inspire you to like come up with a fluffy name for your team and not just be called zombified because there's no <laughs> team in Blood Bowl called zombified. Oh, I'm going to call um, them the walking dead because no one's ever thought of that before. <laughs> well, I think everybody, that's a, just an easy go to, well, yeah. but you're definitely right. So we're making fun of. That's why I used it as an example. Right. And if you're listening to the for- first time, they're black orcs. O R C S. I know we're getting <laughs> a lot of 40 K people starting to play and we're going to see orcs with K's everywhere. Yeah. That's not for blood bowl guys. That's okay. And, and I promise you, if I get into 40 K, I'm going to call them orcs with K's not orcs with C's. So, yep. I'll help you out there. You help us, we help you. Anything, Anything else you want to say about this spike? No, I'm all good. I wish we had the dice. I wish we just had it all. Right yes, now. of course, but we don't. And I wish there wasn't COVID so we could get together and play yes, at the store. Very really so. bad. But yeah, um, so special episode again. Uh, we'll just, I'll leave this, what well, I was going to say, for shout outs, and we'll be right back. And now, if we can pull Scott away from the Patriots game, it'll be time for some... Shout-outs! I think you might have actually hurt the machine doing that. <laughs> it sounded like it, you were doing it, and then it dropped for a second. It's like, nope, I've had enough. <laughs> well, it hurts my voice sometimes to do that, and today is one of those days. <laughs> well, maybe we should just change formats and not do it next time. Ever again? I think all the new people, for the first time listening, is going to like really embrace this. <laughs> We, you and know, with it's, it's, everything new coming out, we might have to do new reintroductions. We could do new everything. 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 Ah, uh, boy. Take it back to that. one. Take it back to one. We're never doing that. I don't, <laughs> I don't like podcasts that do that. Matter of fact, I've stopped listening to some podcasts that did that. Yeah, it's a good and stopping I, point. Uh, and I'm not, I'm talking about like some pro wrestling ones who yeah. have done that for sure. Like I was pretty loyal and then all of a sudden they go, we're going to start over. And I'm like, okay, I'm out Mm -hmm. because I've always felt obligated and now I don't. So shout shout out to you got buddy. Again, GW, everyone there really thankful that we had the opportunity to see this early and get to review it. And they let us, and that's huge. I, I totally agree with you. I, I think the feedback, even though it's only been a couple of days, has been really strong. They really enjoyed the episode. They enjoyed getting information from us, which I find is kind of strange and weird. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad people are like really excited about Blood Bowl. And I know we're going to get quite a few new listeners. So I, you know, I think getting a new intro is really, maybe that's what we should do for December. Yeah. I'm um, cool with that. You know, so everybody kind of knows where we're coming from, our background and, you know, our podcast is about fluff. So like stuff like Spike Magazine is really what we're into. Now we don't, I never, ever, ever will play even a goblin team with a, I don't care if I win. I'm just going to go try to hurt somebody and get casualties that don't help me earn star player points. Cause that's cute. No, mm-hmm. I'll never do. I'll never do that. Now, Steve might, I will not. I always try to win, but I just love, you know, Blood Bowl and this kind of like, not so serious universe and at the same time it can be as serious as you want yeah you know it, it's a sports role-playing game and that's how we look at it and if you're listening to us for the first time you're going to get a lot of that you know with this so i don't know if i have any shout outs really do you have particular people you want to talk about well uh from, besides gw sure from the land down under as soon as blood bowl 2020 drops the western melbourne blood bowl league this blood ball should be blood bowl i think well maybe it's called blood ball there oh it's blood ball now i mean the toilet's flushed different down there right no that's a false that's a myth oh man the western melbourne blood ball league will be starting training camps then kicking off season four in february 25 21 the wmbbl has a new home pitch local game store at guff werribee it's a odd name but it's cool uh, good luck to all brand new coaches and returning coaches. 
we thank you for listening to both down podcast as your preferred blood bowl podcast and that's for oh. our buddy sean down there oh sean loves this and his league which he's decking out all in cool both down stuff that's really awesome we're we're in somewhere that is pretty close to being like hell on earth because everything <laughs> is poisonous and on fire and made of lava right every animal is poisonous in australia um venomous but okay venomous poisonous if you eat them and you get sick it's poisonous well if... it's both in they're venomous Probably. poisonous most likely yes <laughs> lava creature lava frogs <laughs> lava kangaroo yeah it's like i would love to go to australia but just like not the area that has all the cane toads because no <laughs> and, and then they're make... like oh it's no big deal you just go out and back with a baseball bat and whack him around it's every australian's duty like nope 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 dude i don't nope, think nope. you could make it there especially if it was like mating season and they're everywhere oh they're just everywhere anyways are they really huh? yeah okay. in certain parts of australia it's just it's horrible. I got you. But uh, I think I, that's it. Uh, we do encourage you, if you do want shout outs, please feel free to, you know, mail us, let us know. Mailing's best because it's easier for us to keep track. You know, we both have access to that. For sure. And yeah, if you're new to the game too, you know, give us, drop us the line, ask questions. Yeah. Occasionally people do that, you know, rate, review us, uh, feedback, good or bad. I know sometimes we have episodes where, we don't try, but we know that just like some <laughs> Spike magazines, we know some episodes are better than others. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's a toll sometimes trying to put something out all the time, but we been, do love it. It's been rough at times during the COVID stuff. And at other times, believe it or not, you listeners have kind of like pulled us through because oh, easily. It's, it's been rough out there with COVID <laughs> being yeah. cooped in your house and not going to do normal things. So... I don't know. It is it's great hearing those... from people around the world, though. Just checking in on us and, you know, for then, sure. checking to see how they're doing and all that. It's a it's a great thing to do where uh, your listeners can pull you up at times and at other times you pull your listeners up. So, And uh, we do know we my my uh, mixer is, does appear to be going out, so may have to buy one of those. So if you want a, a pre-Blood Bowl 2020 pitch on neoprene, I can hook you up with one from Oklahoma Bowl. Let Ooh, me know. Look, look at that guy shilling. <laughs> shilling like crazy. Well, that way we can get new 2020 versions. Oh. Just saying. You're right. We're going to have to because kickoff tables and stuff. Have kickoff changed. tables, fan factor, all that stuff. Oh, my gosh. They did this just to take away our <laughs> yeah. stock. Yeah, but, you know, if you the pitches are still awesome. If you like them, just let us know. We yeah, great pictures. Happy so. to sell them to you. Anyways, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome along the both down ride. Welcome to our living rooms and hanging out with two guys who really do love the product Blood Bowl. If you're an old veteran, I hope you love the current edition as much as me and Steve. I can't wait for a couple more weeks to have my own copy in hand. It's going to be I'm... weird when everyone starts getting it. Because, it you know, and... we think we. We both have that feeling that everybody has access to the leaks because as soon as they were out there, we got access to them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, not everybody does. So there's a lot of people that just don't know the new rules yet. And no. I envy you because that's going to be awesome when you buy that box. It's going to be super exciting for you, for sure. It was, um, there was <laughs> very few times in my life did i get something so excited on such a if you think about it something kind of dumb and silly that i can't <laughs> control and i had no part in creating in but at the same time where blood bowl excels to me as a sports role-playing game i've created so much in this universe that in my brain is in continuity mm -hmm. and um you know it's just as much as mine as it is really anybody else's. And I think that's the beauty of all role-playing games, right? You, yeah. You, create, you get to create with somebody sandbox and do things. So I was excited as if not more excited as I was pouring through the actual Blood Bowl second edition rules for the first time when my buddy bought that. Yeah. Um, 
it's really exciting i hope it's every bit as i hope a year from now i'm still just as excited for the new rules and really i hope in three weeks that (laughs) the world gets better about you know covid stuff even though there's no sign of it going I mean, down here in America. So far, we've um, tried nothing, and that's not working. So I know. Uh, what I'm hoping for is I get to play some real tabletop Blood Bowl with some friends. Yeah. Get togethers. And I'm hoping maybe myself and my friends can keep tight knit groups. And I would just, lo- I would love nothing more than to play a Blood Bowl tournament, you know. You know, like a fourteen-man tournament or something. And I know that's not going to happen for a while, but right now, I would love for me, you, and two other guys to get together and have a four-man tournament. Yeah. You know, just play two matches and you know, order a pizza and sit around and talk and explore and discover these new rules. Like, is this how this works? Mm-hmm. I think so. Let's look it up. And all of us pull out our rule books and get to. Oh, that's really cool. They covered that, like we did in some of that play testing. So. Um, well we'll get there one way or the other in some ways i didn't think they needed to fix blood bowl and now that they've kind of changed it and fixed it and it's going to happen it's almost breathed in some fresh life yeah in some sure. ways so maybe it was getting stale and i didn't realize it well it had in the sense like that's why we did random skills we never liked picking skills because Okay, uh, I got three people leveling up. First skill, uh, block, block, block. Done. You're right. Okay, second right skill, that. dodge, dodge, dodge. And now we're to the third skill. I guess I'll take a kick. You know, this guy, mighty blow, this guy, frenzy, whatever. You know, the meta was stale and now it is completely blown open. But that's yeah. something we'll have to get more into when we discuss the actual rules so yeah that's gonna be interesting so anyways i know we ranted long enough in this shout out so as uh, always thanks thanks for listening we will see you next month probably a few weeks something like that oh i guess we'll probably do something after we get the boxes yeah we might do that anyways thanks for listening see ya you can follow both down on twitter at both down you can follow Scott at Fat Finley, F A T F I N L E Y, and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you want to know if your team name is both down approved, send a tweet to at BD approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. Yeah, um, I don't really have anything. We recorded the episode fast. Scott messed up the intro because he always does. I don't know why he even listened to it. And I just, out of frustration, I deleted it instead of keeping it. Because how many times do you guys really want to hear Scott mess up the intro? I mean, it's like every time. So, um, yeah, I don't really have anything for this. So enjoy. Enjoy.